Well, hello, everybody. Hi, Welcome guys. to Table Talk. Welcome, Billy. Glad welcome, you're here. Brad. Yeah, well, we all feel welcome here. We're glad that you're here. And listen, we're going to take a few minutes and dive a little bit deeper into the message that Pastor Billy preached just yesterday in this very room. Now, if you were not here live at one of our worship services or you haven't been online yet, let me encourage you to go to one of three places. You can go to our website and you see the address at the bottom, F bcfo.org. You can also go to our YouTube channel or you can go to our Facebook page and those are also there being projected at the bottom. We want to make sure that you are fully engaged, not just with the message from yesterday, but with all that's going on here at First Baptist Church. So Billy, you brought a great word for Thank us. Thank you very much. Yeah. Why don't you give us a little encapsulation of it? So, so we talked about Genesis chapter 3 and I don't know if you, if you remember last Sunday, we were talking about uh, there, just a hint of the first family, Adam and Eve, and I felt like we needed to, to go a little further into that. So our sermon series for the last few weeks, we've been talking about uh, you know what the church is for. And I wanted to talk about freedom, but I wasn't quite sure to, where to go with it. Well, ultimately, we are for being free from sin. That's where it all starts. Before we can be, have freedom in anything else, we need to be free from the chains of sin. So we, st- we took a look at Genesis 3, that initial conversation between Satan and Eve, a, a very real devil, uh, and we kind of dug into that, and, and it was a lot of fun. You know, interesting, you mentioned that freedom concept and we here in the U.S. of A., uh, maybe especially here in the South, I will hear more often prayers that beginning, Lord, thank you that we live in a country where we have the freedoms that we have and they never mention, Lord, thank you for freeing me of my sin. Because it's, it's a problem, isn't it? We're it, not. it is a problem and I'll tell you, Brad, that's fascinating you brought that up because that was my struggle. Initially, several weeks ago, when I thought about the concept of freedom, I was thinking a very different direction that probably would have resonated a little better with people, something that they could have, I don't know, sang along to and proud to be an American, whatever. And, uh, but no, at the end of the, the day, the very beginning of where freedom starts is freedom from sin. And that has to be addressed. And it affects everybody who believes in Christ, right. not just the ones who live here in America, but right. even the ones who live in oppressive countries Again, with a, no especially. freedom. Yes, yes. They still have to be free from sin. From the very same sin. Very good. Yes. Yeah. Well, listen, you mentioned several things that we tend to do because of Satan maybe twisting or, or adjusting or something in our thinking about what sin is or about what the consequences of sin are. Yeah, um, what, how, what, like what the devil does yeah. to us. So, so obviously this is something that everyone re- resonates with. Satan cast doubt. Let's look at our society. We live in a world of doubt, of over, uh, over analyzing our life, uh, worrying about this, that, and the other, comparing ourselves to others. Not only does Satan cast doubt, he twists the truth. We are becoming a society where there are no parameters. There are no moral guidelines. Everything's fair game. We, we make decisions on our, our personal truth rather than the truth Mm -hmm. as very clearly, easily uh, defined by scripture. And, and the worst of all is Satan dismisses the consequences. We live in a world where unless you've, there's video evidence of you being busted, then it Mm -hmm. doesn't count. We were playing, I'm, I'm going to tell you, we were, we were playing kickball yesterday. So I don't know why, I finished a little early in the first service, and I came straight down, I, and for whatever reason, there were, there were some children playing kickball in between the two buildings. They were in between the services, and they were just messing around. And there was this one fella, and uh, as they were playing kickball, he was going to first base, and uh, the person threw the ball and hit him. Very clearly, he was out. Very clearly, he was out. But he goes to first base and they start arguing. He was saying, no, I wasn't. Yes, you were. No, I wasn't. There was no way to prove that he was out. Mm-hmm. Now, I saw him and I called him out. Right. But that's just the world we live in. Right. Unless there's proof, the sin didn't occur. And, and even the way technology has advanced, even with video evidence, artificial intelligence can adjust that. Can, can fake that you know? so quickly. Yeah, and, and all of a sudden, there could be a video of me shooting somebody. And how far are we from that? Like, really, how mm-hmm. far are we right. from 
we can't tell a political ad if it's even a real political ad. I'm really worried about that. Yes, yeah, very much so. So we have to get back though to the truth, which is God's word. And you don't need to reshare it, but you shared a great story about a meeting you were in among church members and, and how they were discussing something. And, and finally someone stood up and said, well, is that biblical? And the attitude was, well, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter because we're the leaders. We're the church Pharisees, if you will. So what we say is biblical and that's just wrong. Mm, yes. We have to go back to the way, the truth, that's good. the life. Jesus said it as, Jesus, Jesus yeah. said it as clearly as it can be said. That's right. And so we as believers need to make sure that we are standing on that truth and we have to decide, am I going to do this? or am I going to be biblical? And then you say, well, I'm gonna do this. And you say, well, you're choosing being that way over being biblical. And right. that's the bottom line. And that's what we that do. We're doing. And it's probably because of, as you said earlier, our personal uh, truth, our personal preferences, what we think is right. That's right. Wow. Give us one final thought, summarize it for us. Would you, Billy? You know, so a, a summary with my passion for next generation ministry, I would imagine the average person watching this is a grandparent, a parent, or has influence. And we need to remember that this personal truth, not only is it a lie in our life, it is teaching a next generation that it's a lie. And we need to remember that every time we pass down wrong to another generation, that grows larger and larger. So when we look at our problems in the youngest generation today, we're surprised by how wrong things are. But the previous gen generation manipulated, the generation before that, well, what's next? Mm. We have to dig into the gospel. We have to know where truth lies. And the real truth is only found in Christ Jesus resurrected. Wow, that is a great closing word. And, and we wanna encourage you, if, if that is a truth that you fully have it grasped, we wanna be here for you to help walk you through in that truth. We believe that Jesus Christ is who he said that he is. And we also have committed our lives to that. And we cannot think of a grander or a better commitment that you could make if you never have. Reach out to us, contact us, go through our website, go through our social media uh, channels because we want to be there for you and minister with you and alongside of you. So we're going to say, God bless you. Billy, lead us in a prayer so and much. then we will say goodbye. Let's pray. We'll, we'll finish this out. Father God in heaven, Lord, I love you. And I praise you for this time of the year, Lord, as the leaves change and we, we have trunk or treat going on, Lord. I pray that that outward reflection of the change be exactly what's going on in our heart, Lord. Now, obviously, Lord, for a lot of people watching this or being a part of our ministry, maybe we get it. Maybe, maybe our faith life is strong. But even with us, there is change that probably needs to happen as we grow towards you. And then for all the people that, that, that come to our, our, or are part of our fellowship, that maybe they're young younger believers or not believers at all, Lord, I pray that you wrap their, your arms around them in such a way that they understand that at the end of the day, you are the truth. In Christ Jesus' name, I pray these things. Amen. Amen. Well, for Thanks, this folks. time, we'll say goodbye. <laughs>